Legend to Server. Right, three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this month's episode of I Got Gameplay. You know me as if you've watched this show or listened to it from all the places where you can listen to podcast episodes. I am your host, Michael Burhan. And of course, I am with someone who's one of the OGs from this podcast because this person is someone that I worked with initially because he was on, um, he invited me onto an episode of the Excess Gaming podcast. I remember the day that you messaged me because I did not reply to you for about like three months or something because I didn't right. see the message. <laughs> um, we became really close friends. Uh, we were working as moderators and stuff for the Excess Gaming podcast and then kind of fell off a little bit because real life, e-life bullshit. And then eventually just kind of grew up um and started talking again and we've been friends ever since he is the awesome he's a talented musician and also a regular youtuber in his own right he is xander scullion xander how are you it's 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 <laughs> great and you know before the show i remember messaging you on facebook and i'm like dude this is the first time we've done like a a podcast or any sort of like medium in like 10 years 10 yeah. freaking years man it was like 2014 and i mean it feels like yesterday but that was yeah. like a decade ago, man. <laughs> the world was yeah. very different 10 years ago. <laughs> it's yeah. The cost of living was, uh, was at least bearable 10 years ago. <laughs> it's true. No, looking, looking at the cost of living. It's one of the reasons I moved to China because the cost of living here is completely and utterly cheap for what I do. Um, but yeah, like, you know, you've had a few things that have happened. Sorry. I've got a, a cat in the background having a case of the zoomies. So Lucky's gone to go and check on it. <laughs> uh, this is the thing about recording your podcast at home, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to have cat zoomies in the background. Um, so, like, you've basically gone through a few things. Like, you how, were in a band, then you broke up, and then you got back with the band again. Uh, yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, see, that was the interesting thing. So the band, and, and this lets you know, like, the history of the band has a long history because the band started out initially back in, I want to say 2025, 2024. No, no, no. 20, oh, 2004, 2005. I'm dating myself here. I'm so used to saying 20s. But no, 2005, it started out as a senior project in high school. My good friend, Mikey, he had a senior project and he was like, I want to start a punk band. So that's what his senior project was. He knew I played bass. He was playing guitar. He, we both sang and stuff. And, you know, we hung out a little bit beforehand and we were pretty good friends. But, uh, you know, after high school, normally everyone goes to college. That happened. But we kept the band going and we kept the band going from like 2005. I left for like a year. But from 2005 to like 2016, we were doing this band thing. And, you know, things happen. You start to kind of want to kind of grow. And uh, I remember the guitars. We, we were having a, we had a show or whatever, and we were putting everything back in the storage unit. And he was like, yeah, I don't really think I want to keep doing the band. I think I want to kind of move on. And I was like, you know, that's cool. That's cool if you want to do that. I mean, because me and him were always friends. The band was always secondary. That was just kind of like our, our child, if you could say. But, um. So the band broke up in 2016, and unfortunately, one of our uh, former drummers, Taylor uh, Taylor Green, he passed away, and he passed away in 2019. And I think that's when you know, because at this point, we're me and Mike here both are older; we're in our 30s, and the band had been broken up for you know a couple of years now. And we were just like, you know, this is during the pandemic. We were, just, we were like, man, we won't play music again. We were both getting into recording at home. So he was recording stuff at home, sending it to me. And he, he recorded one of our older songs. And I'm like, man, I can play bass to that. So I, I played bass to it, sent it to him. And before you knew it, the band was back together. And uh, we've been together for about four years. Uh, our, our drummer that we have now, I still, I still talk about her like she's our new drummer, but she's been playing with us for almost four years now. But Brittany, freaking amazing. And we, we just have this natural nucleus, this natural understanding that, you know, we play and we just really click. I mean, we don't even have to have practices half the time. Half the time we go and play a show and it's like we hadn't seen each other in like two months. We get up there on stage and knock it out. But I think that's the, the main thing, you know, rather it's a, a band or YouTube or 
anything like that communication and and the passion and just both seeing eye to eye you you're just going to do good that you can't do bad with it you know so speaking of communication you also have a youtube channel so i want to talk about that uh, a little bit because i i feel like you're we used to model our youtube channels on the people that we looked up to mm-hmm. but i feel like in some ways your youtube channel kind of surpassed the people mm-hmm. like because most of the og guys have fallen off like they've either retired or they've basically been bullied by the internet to the point where they're just uh like have a small channel and stuff how do you maintain keeping your channel going after all this time uh for me it's just because i love being creative i think that's the main thing i think that the day that i don't want to edit videos is is the day i'll stop making videos the day I'll, i'll stop doing youtube because um i'm like naturally i'm a creative person like i love you know writing music uh, obviously YouTube and podcasting and all that stuff is very creative, but it also leaves me room for editing and creating that way. So sometimes like lately, because I've been working on my music production, I'll go and record a song that I know, like on say guitar and bass. I'm like, all right, I'm going to go cover this song. And I do it for the sole purpose of just producing and mixing and mastering. You know, I'm just wanting to make everything sound good. So when I do a YouTube video, You know, I maybe want to talk about, you know, my go to Neo Geo games, but I'm also wanting to do a my go to Neo Geo games because maybe I have some new ideas I want to do filming wise, maybe new keyframes, maybe new uh, lighting. Uh, That's the thing. I always want to put out uh, like a really good product. And um, I I, I can honestly say, and I'm trying to be, I'm not trying to sound like I'm full of myself, but I can honestly say, like, people who watch my channel, I've never had anyone watch my channel and be like, the, the editing or the audio sucks. I have never had that. Like I've always had people go, man, you're if anything, I've, people are like, this is very underrated, man. Like, I don't, I'm surprised you don't get more views. And I'm just like, eh, I don't know what to tell you. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's just something I like doing, but, uh, but yeah. And, and yeah, I have evolved over the years. Um, like, like you said, when we first start off, we kind of imitate what we're into. And I mean, that I think that's any sort of medium. I mean, I'm pretty sure when you when you first got into acting, Burhan, that you had actors that you looked up to and that you kind of like took in little influences from every single actor in some way and made it your own. We do it with music too. I mean, when someone picks up the guitar, they're not just they no one just randomly picks up the guitar and they're like, I just want to play the guitar. They pick up the guitar because they heard like Jimmy Page or they heard, you know, some sort of song that really resonated with them and they kind of naturally kind of imitate it. But the, the best thing or the cool thing about it is once you really get into that artistic flavor, you start to kind of form who you are. And, and that's really where the real fun begins as a creative person. When you're doing something and you know in the back of your head, you're like, this is this is me. This is who I am. And uh, it's really cool when people start accepting it and stuff, you know. It's a like I remember one of the first well, first major guests we had on the podcast was Mega Ran. Um, mm-hmm. And I think like watching him, because I, I remember the days where he was like shifting CDs and, and digital downloads from his own website, right? Um, and he was using like Bandcamp and stuff to to kind of shift his stuff. And now he's like touring everywhere. Like he did a concert mm-hmm. with Weezer recently. Like he was touring with Weezer all over London and all that stuff. And watching how he flourishes and his success the guy's never changed like his whole mo has been the same which is just get my stuff out there if people enjoy it great if i can make a success of it great and i think it kind of mirrors your um work ethic on your channel but it's more Mm -hmm. like you're playing the stuff that you enjoy you're doing what you enjoy and exactly and and called like the eyes thing we all know that the YouTube algorithm is tosh, right? It's completely and utterly garbage. Like, yeah, like if, yeah, like if I, if I wanted to like become a bigger YouTuber, I know what kind of videos to make, you know, I I know what people are watching and, you know, and and I'll mention that to some people and they, they think that we're like, well, that's why your channel's not growing. You gotta, you gotta, you know, do what's trending. You, if people are doing this, you gotta do that. And oh, you gotta upload a video every day. You gotta do shorts. You gotta do that. And at one time, I was like that, and it burned me out so much. I want to say back in like from like 2018 to 2020 on my YouTube channel, um, I I just burned myself out because I was doing a lot of reviews. I was 
reaching out to companies, getting review keys, and, and oversaturating my myself with video games and trying to put these games out, trying to do the embargoes. And I mean, a, a lot of that stuff is a lot of work for one person. I remember I'd be working like two jobs at the time. And like my, my first job in the morning, it was kind of slow. So that was like my time. I would be like writing out the script of my YouTube channel. Like I'd be working while I'm working. And um, yeah, it just, it is, it has really burned me out. And if anything, what I've been doing a lot more uh, other than videos, is I've been doing a lot more live streams as well. Cause live streams, I, I never really dived into it too much until a couple of years ago. And it's something that's so different that it's kind of fun. It, it's like picking up a new instrument. It's because live streaming or, you know, in some cases, podcasting is much different than like scripted YouTube videos, you know, like YouTube videos where you're in control of everything. But when you do a podcast, especially if it's a, a one person, person to person or multiple people podcast, there's a lot of uh, a lot to do. And same thing with live streaming, because you're essentially like talking to yourself, but at the same time talking to people. It's really weird, but it's cool. And uh, one of the things I want to look look into doing is uh, actually live streaming more of my music because I have, I have the technology. I'm just stubborn. I need to watch my 10-minute YouTube video of how to sync Reaper, my doll, into uh, OBS. And once I do that, I'm going to do like a, I'm going to have like a whole set list of songs that I can play bass to and, you know, have like a virtual show. Like, why not? Well, you know, there's no reason not to. Like, I can see everyone and their mother um basically on the online platforms so, and you know, i've recently joined tiktok and I was, I was telling you when it comes to the tiktok platform i tried to differentiate from this um because with my youtube channel it's more the versatile like videos uh, i've had a few people ask me about bringing back the rather british review series and stuff and like you it just burn out um oh, yeah. one of the reasons i i ended up leaving youtube and then coming back was i i left originally was burnout and also harassment like um people wanted my channel to become a drama channel i didn't want to do drama videos they were doing well i was getting like a thousand one thousand five hundred review and i was like i felt like i was just speaking my mind but then people were like oh you need to target this person oh you need to attack this person oh you need to yeah. get this and i was just like i don't want to do that <laughs> like why what have they done to me nothing um yeah. And I, I remembered all that shit. And then when I stopped doing it, people would just harass me nonstop. Oh, you didn't do this. You know, you're this or that. And it's just like, I don't, I'm not that person. I don't want to be this person. I don't want to do this, um, like toxicity. It's coming back like with the drama channels. Um, it's coming back full circle now. Cause a lot of drama channels are coming back, especially targeting guys like Mr. Beast. Um, yeah. and I'm, completely hating on it right now because we all know that mr beast is not a bad person mm -hmm. but you can see all the videos coming out of disgruntled employees or guys with smaller channels attacking the dude because they smell blood in the water because his friend was an edgelord back in the day um mm -hmm. and you know everyone's made their judgment and it's it's one of those things where i just especially in today's climate as well with the amount of toxic negative crap out there it's, it's just not worth it and then, you know, and you bring up a good point because, you know, back, back in our day, Burhan, back in our day, when we had like drama, now we have to be, we have to be very specific about this to some of the newer listeners, because when we say drama, it's nowhere near what the drama is out like today. Okay. No, our, no, our not. drama, our drama was like, oh, this person doesn't really play their video games. That yeah, was our e drama. E-baggers, e you know, yeah. or, ooh, they had a Patreon or, you know, it's stuff that you look at now and you're like, that's, that's fucking silly. Like, why were we even doing this? You know, and now you look at the drama channels now where people are like doxing each other and, and people yeah. are turning out to be like terrible people online. And I'm just like, oh, my God. And it, it, it kind of as you get older, I guess you become more cautious, too. And that was um, one of the reasons, like, I, I kind of didn't want to do as much online because I was hearing all this stuff. And I'm like, I, I don't even want to be out here, man. Like, you guys are fucking nuts, you know? Yeah. 
So it's Do you remember it's... our biggest our biggest one was the final bosses, if you remember that. Like yeah. I was accused of shutting down the final bosses. Like I was the reason why the the final bosses <clears throat> does not exist at this point in time. Um, and I remember that entire thing. And I was, if you remember the amount of harassment I was getting, they were all their fans were like coming after me. And I'm like, what the actual F word, you know, they would find me. They would, I had to set my, my Facebook to private. They were at the time targeting my girlfriend at the time. So now any relationship I have is private. I don't publicly talk about yeah. it. Um, because of people just going after my Instagram, they were going after my Facebook, they were commenting on my kids, they were calling me all sorts of names. I had people wishing that I was dead, like, like publicly talking about it. Guys like Jeremy McDougall, who's you know, fuck you, Jeremy. Um, because <laughs> I'm still sour about that situation. Oh, yeah. And I mean, I mean, like, you, you learn you learn a lot. And, you know, I, I look back on it and I can definitely feel my age. I'm 38 now. You know, back then I was, you know, in my early 30s, late 20s. And, you know, and 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 on a, on a personal note, and I think this is good to mention for on, on a mental health standpoint, was I didn't realize how much like emotionally I was going through a lot of stuff in my life. Because when I first started my YouTube channel and my podcast, my my father had just passed away. And then the next year, my grandfather passed away and my grandfather, he's the one that got me into video games. Like I, yeah. when I first learned how to walk, it was to my grandpa, like me and my grandpa were really close and I was also starting a new job. And, you know, <clears throat> at that time, I didn't really, I, I grieved, but I didn't really, you know, I guess I didn't finish because I look at a lot of stuff that I, that I, a lot of attitude and a lot of ways I, I viewed things back in the day. And I look at it and I'm like, I, I was dealing with a lot more than just like who plays their video games. And, and I think that's the main thing is like people have to sometimes look at their mental health and it's good to sometimes shut off from the internet. And I think that's the, one of the biggest problems of why we have so much drama today. And especially this kind of drama, because we all know that, to keep the YouTube algorithm going, you have to get more and more and more extreme. And, you know, 10 years ago, it was like a big deal. If you had a Patreon, you know, now yeah. here we are in 2024 and it's like, what the hell are they doing on discord? I, I, I don't even have a discord because like no. the, the whole thing just seems like inner pool of like weird shit. So sometimes yeah. I'll have, sometimes I'll have someone be like, Oh yeah, you should join our discord. And I'm like, for one, I don't know. I really don't know how to use it. It's 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 uh, I'm 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 like a boomer when it comes to Discord. I'm like, what's this yeah. new hick you do? But so I stay off of it that way. But also, like, I never hear anything good come out of Discord. Yeah. <laughs> like, none. Well, I, none. I'm a millennial, like, pretty pretty much like you, right? We're both millennials. Yeah. I'm, I'm a couple of well, I'm about, I think, four years older than you. Like, I'm 42. Yeah, you're you're um, you're close. you're tiptoeing into the Gen X, but you but you got your foot into the millennials. Yeah, I'm I'm what they call an elder millennial because my daughter was like a younger millennial, but she's now Gen Z. She's moved yeah. into Gen Z after recategor uh, they recategorized everything. And the funny thing about me, there's when I was going through all the drama shit too. Um, I think we had rather similar things because we had to literally, like, I know there was one guy who harassed you so much you reported him to his work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And like, cause when I was getting harassed, I remember I got harassed, me and you stopped talking for a while. And then from the same group that harassed me, they started targeting you. And it, it got into a situation where I think that it wasn't just the, the online and the YouTube stuff. It was the people within that. Like, um, I can, I can name a few guys, but I'm not going to, cause I don't want to like start feuding with people again. But those people, I remember they were just so toxic and they just kept targeting everyone. And I remember like dealing with Justin was coming to me going, hey, so-and-so saying this about you. And Tag was going, hey, so-and-so was saying this about you. And it was just like, just be prepared. They're planning something. And I'm just like, what? Why am I so important? <laughs> yeah, I mean, and then and it, gets, it gets very like just juvenile, you know, like I, that's why I like, I'm, I, you have to, and I think, I think a lot of people don't realize this is you really do have to have 
a social life and your online stuff. Um, and and I think with the, the with the pandemic, it's become harder for some people because you know we were isolated for so long. But if you're naturally introverted, I mean, I think you can agree. I mean, obviously, Berhan, I think you can agree that it's easier for us just to make friends online and have yeah. that communication on our terms, rather it's a message or a Zoom meeting or something like that. But I have like, for, I think me and you are majority online friends. Like we haven't actually met in real life. Yeah. Um, but like I can, I can still count you on like the five closest people in my life. Yeah. Um, but for me being an actual introvert, what I've tend to do now is I try not to open myself up to people as much like other mm -hmm. people. If I know, cause I'm very good at looking at people's psychology. If someone's an asshole, or if they're going to mm -hmm. say something bad about someone to me, then you know what they're probably saying about me to someone else. Yeah. Um, and I try not to kind of associate with those things. What I usually do is I go, hey, uh, if it's a work thing, because, you know, most people know I now I'm working as a teacher. Mm -hmm. um, if it's a colleague that's doing something at work, I'm like, listen, don't, you know, don't involve me. And then I'll just go directly to management and say, right, sort that out. Because it's, you know, it's harassment at work. Um, but I also find that though with me and dealing with things, I had to literally leave the country I was residing and move to another country to kind of sort my head out. Um, but that was also like figuring out a few things. Cause I, I got diagnosed with ADHD. Well, technically mm -hmm. I'm still undiagnosed because I haven't officially <clears throat> been diagnosed, but I had a psychologist diagnose that I have ADHD, but it was never officially written up. It was doing um like my own counseling and stuff like that mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me that i went through on the nhs um but i had to like figure out those things but also figure out around me there was so much toxicity and part of it were the online friends that we had there's it's kind of died down now because i think what you and i have chosen to do is we've kept our circles smaller now we yeah. like if someone's going to cause drama we kind of just be like listen if you're going to do that then i'm not going to be a part of it so good luck on your future endeavors um, yeah i feel like i'm being the wwe here but it's <laughs> it's usually the best way to do and i'm there's even communities there's like online toxic wrestling communities i just stay away from i try to keep things positive i try to get away from toxic people um if someone's a fan of logan paul that's a big red flag for me <laughs> <laughs> or if they if they watch Andrew Tate, big red flag. Well, um and, and I think I think uh you know when it comes to like the the group the group pages and group stuff, it, it becomes almost like a, a, a cyber uh house, you know, and it's almost like you're cyber like you know in the virtual world living together in this little place, like like you're in a dorm or something. And after a while people start arguing about the dumbest shit because they're always fucking around each other. And it doesn't mean like, you know, being around face to face, but online, you know, like, well, you're look, constantly, at, look you're what happened with the Olympics. Look what yeah. happened with the Olympics. People were arguing if a woman was trans or not, you know, or she was really a man or whatever. And it was like, who fucking cares? Firstly, but at the same time, you know, it's dangerous for her because she's comes from a country that's very anti-trans. She could have mm -hmm. got herself hurt or killed. And I'm glad right now she's going to be suing people, including Elon Musk, which I hope she like takes into the fucking cleaners because you, you shouldn't be going around spreading all this bullshit misinformation. But I agree with you like Marvel movies as well. Look at the Marvel movies. Yeah. How many people are like Marvel's fallen off. Marvel is so shit. Marvel's going to die. And it's just like, but what the fuck? Like, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Just what is who gives a shit? Just watch you know the what, movie. If you like it, great. Well, you know, you know what's so awesome? Or it's awesome in a weird way, is how we have so much access to the things that we love, like Marvel, comics, video games. We have more access now than we've never than we ever have. But we spend so much time now just arguing with each other about trivial shit that doesn't really matter. Like I think in Batman and the Cape Crusader, a lot of people were upset that uh, the Penguin was uh, female. Like they raced, that they gender swapped the Penguin. Now they yeah. did this. They did this 
And they they honestly they should have just went ahead and said this because I think this would have shut a lot of people up. But they're like, you know, we had the penguin movie or show coming out on HBO. So, you know, we can't use the penguin because Warner Brothers is using that IP. So we have to, we're just gonna make him a female and just make a female version of the penguin. It's a different universe, it's a different thing. Well, Bruce Tim said this. He said that there wasn't enough female antagonists for Batman mm-hmm. to fight. So he said, I'm just going to make the Penguin female. But again, as you said, they could use a term of Elseworld. It's Elseworld. It's not yeah. main canon Batman. And, and, like, the thing, and the thing about it is you have all these people that are all upset that this cartoon Penguin's a female. And they're they're ranting up the, the moon. Meanwhile, I'm like, yo. We got a whole nother, dude. We got a whole nother live action soprano style penguin show coming out on HBO Max. So, like, yeah, this one might be a female. You may not agree with that, but hey, dude, you got more stuff to consume. And that's how it is with so much of this is going out. But, yeah. uh, we and you've got like arguing. Colin Fowl playing the penguin. Like, Colin Fowl's transformation yeah. into the penguin is fucking insane. But there's so much content. You're right. There is a lot of content if you don't want to watch it. It's what I'm dealing with with the current wrestling issue because I don't know if you know about AEW. Um, Mm. They're like the second biggest promotion. Forbes has valued them over $6 billion, right? They've been around Mm. for like five years. The amount of people that keep trying to say, oh, they're going to die. They're going to die. I hope they die. I hope they announce that they've... And And wrestlers have benefited because guys who work for WWE now are getting bigger contracts. So yeah. in order for them to stay, they're getting like two, three, four, five million dollar contracts, right? These guys are equal to UFC fighters who fight like two to three times a year. Um, then you've got AEW guys who are getting fatter contracts, guys from Japan, guys from Mexico. You're seeing all this like cross pollination of wrestling. There's a lot more indie places now as well because AEW is a success and it's given a lot more like mainstream attention to younger talent who's been on the independence, but you still hear people go, Oh, we want it to die. We want it to die. It should die. Oh, yeah. And I'm just sitting there going, what you really need to go outside and touch grass. That's what I, my whole mindset is right. Like, as you, mm-hmm. like you, I've matured a lot more. Um, you know, I've, I'm doing my master's degree at the moment, almost at the tail end of that. Figured myself out. Like I've, I've even had a situation where I've gotten into a relationship with someone and we've been dating and she's like anytime we're gonna she wants to start a fight i go stop take a breath let's communicate tell me what's going on Mm -hmm. right whereas before i was like why don't you love me and all that bollocks right now it's kind of like (laughs) take a breath let's talk because it's an easier situation i don't want fucking drama in my life and a lot of these fucking dudes are like, men, men need to work and men need to be the provider and women need to sit down and cook and raise children and pop out 20 kids. And I'm just like, bro, like you could resolve being single by communicating and showing someone who you are, right? Yeah, It's the simplest thing. I'm not Andrew Tate who sits there and, and talks about how the man must provide while prostituting his exes. Um, I'm the the simple person with simple minds, simple things. And the one thing I think that our previous thing in, in the internet has taught us is one, don't take shit too seriously. Mm-hmm. And two, everything we do is reactionary. So to be less reactionary, <clears throat> have a conversation. Even if it ends, like your relationship ends, fine. But at least you've talked. At least you've had a conversation. At least you know it's not working. Uh, If you're having issues with your friends, have a conversation. Like I had a very big debate with a friend of mine recently because he was going on about the NHS trying to be the the forefront of AI. And I'm like, you can't even pay fucking doctors a, a fair salary, right? Yeah. And you're telling me that you're trying to be on the forefront of AI where trillion dollar tech companies are involving themselves in. And he was just like, huh, you don't know what you're talking about. And I'm like, okay, look, you're being arrogant about it. Let's agree to disagree. You're, you know, I wish you all the success. You do you, bro, right? 
but at the same time, I know where this is going. It's not the the best idea, and it's it's the thing. Everyone's trying to do AI now. Everyone's trying to do oh, AI. Yeah. Um, but it's one hey. of those things where I've just learned not to argue with people anymore, man. So yeah, as as you're saying, like it's it's a very weird situation that we're that we're still facing because I feel like in some ways the internet has taken a step back because we're going back to drama again, drama channels, drama everything. Mm-hmm. And you've said that for your mental health purposes, um, focusing on your own health and your own mindset kind of helped you a bit more. So tell me yeah. a bit more about that. Yeah, I mean, you just got to have, you have to put on shaders. You know, you almost got to go in tunnel vision because it becomes very addicting to go on all these different social media platforms. Like you're scrolling on X, scrolling on Facebook, scrolling on TikTok you know, uh, Instagram and even YouTube and just getting so much information. And you're just like, I think some sort of like endorphin trigger or something. You're just like, Oh man, can't get enough of this, you know? And, uh, even TikTok, like TikTok, the amount of content you can get within like three minutes, right? Less than three minutes. And you just scroll, 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 scroll. It met, it really messes with your mind. Like it's, um, it makes it harder to consume longer form content. I noticed that it was harder for me to like watch movies because I was like sitting there just watching the movie and I'm like, all right, okay, what's, what's going to go on now? And I'm just like, I, I, I gotta, I gotta log off for a little bit. That and also just the, just the arguing and the drama and all that stuff. Um, and you just gotta step away from it because you're just gonna end up, getting someone's going to end up pissing you off and it's going to become something that initially wasn't your problem to begin with you know so what was the 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 drama that kind of made you say enough was enough like i know for me it was the jeremy mcdougall stuff i just i couldn't Mm -hmm. do it anymore what was it for you it was probably that i would say that Mm -hmm. it was when it got to the point where i don't know like i said it got to the point where i looked at the big picture and i'm like really what's the big deal about this all you know like what was what's what's the end game like what's the purpose of it you know like i i think that's the i think that's something that people really miss out on when they're initially running on emotions is what is the end game like why why are you initially doing this because i'd be like talk i'd be like thinking about you know some youtuber i had drama with and i'm like thinking about the end game like so what was the end game like what they stopped making content like that's kind of fucked up like I don't want, yeah. I don't, you know, I don't want someone to stop making content. So I'm mean, like, it depends. Well, if like I would be happy if Logan Paul stopped making content, but that's me. Well, <laughs> well, I mean, like, I mean, just just initially, and I'm thinking about, you know, the the people that that I thought about in the past, and I'm just like thinking, I'm like, it's kind of, it's kind of dumb. <laughs> yeah, no, so, I I agree with you completely, yeah. dumb because it's it's one of those things where you could. Like I remember going through the twin perfect situation with like Fungo and them when they split up and like you had Rossiter just basically getting really aggressive and angry and Fungo getting really aggressive and angry. And I'm just like, the best thing they could have done is just talk things out between them. But you had these big, huge crowds of people just attack, 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 attack. Well, it becomes, it becomes a spectacle within itself. And and, and and unfortunately that happens more more times than ever especially with content creators that that sort of drama ends up bleeding out into the public space and in the public yeah. space other content creators like that grab low hanging fruit end up making their own content on it it becomes like getting a telephone at that point yeah dumb. like i'm i, I think dumb. there was one guy that we used to know, uh, what was his name? Uh, very big dude. And he was involved. He's like, I've literally seen videos of him involved in tons of drama videos. Um, you know, uh, what was his name? Like he was a, a Mexican dude. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what his name was. But he was, he was this like, um, like this big, youtuber in his own right Mm -hmm. but he he kind of changed um and he was like the the, there was a word for him the geeky tip star that was it geeky tip star oh yeah 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 
he got into a huge load of SHIT um, because he was, I remember him being friends with us and him being friends with us. He was like a smaller channel in the small community. And he got into a, a thing with a bunch of the community um, who were basically attacking him because he like he got a 4k camera he ordered like a 4k camera or something like that or he no he wanted a macbook he tried to to get a brand new macbook crowdfunded everyone went after him and i defended him and then he started cementing himself in the drama scene he became a drama tuber and literally like i do i like to watch youtube videos too and most of the videos i watch are long form stuff so it's usually like long form videos about review tech glue at USA or long form videos about drama or long form videos about video essays and stuff like that. Right. So stuff that mm -hmm. literally is just long form content and people having discussions about certain things, documentaries. Um, I think the last drama video I saw was when Pat, the NES punk started attacking Larry Bundy. I don't know if you've seen that video. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it was kind of one of those things where, um, I, I I kind of stay clear. It's one of the reasons I've unsubscribed from Pat now, because I just mm. didn't want to get involved. It was like beef that should have been settled five years ago, right? Yeah. But it's it's kind of something that you know that snuffed up his craw. So he decided, oh, I'm gonna attack Larry now. Um, and I think the best thing that Larry did was just not get involved. He just, you know, continues doing his videos. Uh, I haven't seen one of his videos in ages, actually. So I'm wondering if he's still on YouTube. Um, but like when it comes to those style drama videos and the way that drama used to be and the way drama is now, we can see that people are going out for blood now. And it's yeah, gotten it's... to the point where I just think it's it, it's really silly, to be honest. So let's talk about your gaming passions, uh, for instance. What's your favorite <laughs> yes. console? Favorite console. <laughs> What's your favorite console? Yeah. Oh man, you know, I I was thinking about it the other day, and I mean, mm -hmm. the Nintendo Switch. I freaking love the Nintendo Switch. Mine too. It's it's you know, it literally is it, my favorite here, console. Here, and here's the thing, like my my favorite console, like what's your favorite console? You know, growing up, you know, it's probably like Super Nintendo or something. But the Switch has just so much that's awesome. Yeah, physical. this is. Uh, physical version you cannot get the physical version anywhere apart from hong kong and japan so oh hell yeah and it has english yeah 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 it basically the one thing about the switch carts were 99 percent of them um they will work in your native region right so oh. if you put in a like a hong kong cart into uh, a uk account it will change that game thinking that it's the uk version of that game same for this like you can't get this anywhere apart from hong kong and japan the physical version of ace attorney wow that's cool yeah. yeah i've ordered a couple of uh switch imports off like play asia and stuff like some shmups i but yeah i love the switch like it has it has the rpgs i love it has you know the retro games i love it has you know it's, it's a great console and i'm, I'm really looking i'm really looking forward to a new nintendo console though i will say that mm -hmm. like and and you know in regards to like a switch 2 i i just want what everyone else wants the the same thing just more powerful that's it yeah yeah you it's I, I always say with stuff not broke don't fix it you know um they don't need to to try and do anything innovative they can just do the same fucking shit that they've done all the time um i don't know if you see my video I, I did a video reviewing the hong kong edition slash japanese version of the famicom championship edition and instead of oh, yeah. coming with like a gold car it has like the famicom controllers that you yeah. just attach to the switch um you know and it's actually one of those things where i think it's quite cool to see um my uk edition the one that i'm getting from nintendo of uk that's being shipped to my uh, apartment my daughter just shipped it the other day um i told her she could keep the game because the game is the same on both yeah right it's no you know no difference um so she's gonna she's got one which she's been beating my ass on and then i've got the other and what we do is reserve some time to play um some together 
And the great thing about the Switch as well, which is that, you know, Microsoft does a similar thing. So did PlayStation. I don't know actually if PlayStation does, but there's a family service bundle. So what I do is I use the family service online and I play with my kids. They they have the online function because I'm paying like 30 bucks a month, uh, 30 yeah. bucks a year. Yeah. To have that online functionality. So I, I get to play with them. I'm the account holder, but they also have the family members accounts on there too. So it's a good deal. It's like a really good console. The online functionality is not that great. Like it's, there's yeah, still problems. Yeah, there's issues. But I, I would say in terms of value, the, the Switch has a lot more value in comparison to the other consoles like the Xbox and the PlayStation. Um, but it's also because you can just pick that sucker up and just go, you know, to your doctor's appointment and just play your Switch and not have to worry about anything else, which I think is it's, a hell of a lot important. You know what's really interesting about the Switch is the Switch has awakened the handheld market. Like it, the yeah. handheld market is big. I, I would argue that the handheld market's bigger now than it's, than it's been in a very long time. You yeah. know, and that's not including, you know, mobile, like that's not including like cell phones, of course, but, you know, you got the Switch and now the Steam Deck and now all these, you know, different handheld PCs and, you know, clone retro consoles. It's crazy. And that's, it kind of all came from the Switch at this point. That's true. It's <clears throat> with Nintendo, they always manage to innovate. And part of the my favorite thing about living in China is the amount of tech you can like. I, I was saying this to I say it to everybody who comes on this show. Living in China is like technology wise, you're living in the future, but the the culture wise, it's like you're living in the nineties. <laughs> you know, uh, because like you know, women are they all want to be a size zero. You know, every model has like a, a freaking teeny tiny waist and stuff. And the girl I'm dating at the moment, I keep telling her she's literally tiny and she's like, oh, I want to lose weight. I'm getting fat. And I'm like, where, <laughs> where are you getting fat? Yeah. But there's this like kind of body dysmorphic um, idea of what they think the perfect body is. Excuse me. What they think the perfect body is. Whereas on the men's side, um, there's this idea of like masculinity, what masculinity should be. Um, in some ways, it's really toxic. But technology wise, there's everything here. Like I can, I've got access to so much. Uh, ever since I think it's 2012, when they opened up China to Nintendo, Sony, uh, Microsoft, you can get anything here. Everything. Yeah. You can even get the Japanese um, imports of games that are really cheeky and would never get released in the u.s because they're really really questionable like horse dating sims and stuff like that you know yeah the, um, like the freaking <laughs> e-shop the e-shop yeah. on the switch has some like really questionable like games on the very front sometimes i'm like I'm like, oh what's the recent releases and it's like i'm a cat girl excuse me while i hug this banana and i'm like dude what kind of game is this <laughs> <laughs> what what is this oh, I, I it's a visual I'm... novel okay i'll pass yeah i bought <laughs> one of those visual novels recently and i think it's like a pigeon dating sim visual novel thing and i i'm i'm so scared to play it like it was a 99 cents bundle thing from the uk store and i'm like i i don't i don't think i should play this maybe i'll get put on a list <laughs> Yeah, there's there's some there's some really weird games, but then there's like some games that are just insanely cool, like Pizza Titan, uh, Super oh, Robot. Titan. Yeah, you know, like playing something like oh hell yeah, you know. But uh, yeah, I, I, it makes me think of this one game I I was playing. I talked about my play and tell series was the uh, Little Kitty Big City. That's uh, that's a such a fun game. It's like what's that about? Well, you play as this uh, black cat who fell out of his apartment window, yeah. and he's trying to get back into his apartment building, but he, he can't, so he has to like do all these different mini quests with like crows and raccoons and dogs, and it's it's very you know cheeky and, and 
it, it's really cool. It's like Stray meets Untitled Goose Game, but it's not as random as Untitled Goose Game, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I, I think so. I may have to give that one a whirl myself. The, it's the really one thing fun. I will say, I've been so busy that I haven't been able to kind of sit down. Like I will be playing in spurts, but I haven't actually been able to sit down and give myself some time. So I'm thinking after my Masters is done, you can see my cat up above me there. Uh, yeah. Little Samus is on the wardrobe. Um, what She's like the, the co-host of the show now because she's always seen in the videos. But the what my plan is after i finish my dissertation or as most people call it a thesis for my masters is i'm going to spend a year off from studying uh before i do my phd and within that time i'm going to spend more time gaming because i've missed it so much like i've been collecting <laughs> switch games but i haven't played any of them and it's annoying because i want to play like, I still haven't finished Tears of the Kingdom, despite the fact my daughter's finished it and oh, beat the man. game. I'm, I'm telling I'm you, let me, let me let me have a moment to talk about Tears of the Kingdom, because honestly, Tears of the Kingdom is, is, is right up there with some of the best games I've ever played in my entire life. Tears of the Kingdom, like, I, I it wasn't a game I was really hyped about. Like, I liked, Bre I liked Breath of the Wild. I thought it was fun. And, uh, when I heard that you had to like, you had to build shit in Tears of the Kingdom, I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, I don't, I'm not really crafty. You know, I don't know if I want to do that. You've seen the shit that people built in that game. It's yeah. Insane. Well, that's what I'm getting to. That's what I'm getting to because then I started playing the game and I realized, I'm like, holy shit. You can build whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. And, and if you, if you can think it, you can finish it. Because there's times that I would go into a dungeon and it was like, oh, you have to like light the the boat and make a little thing and had the wind do this. And instead of like, I took a stick and lit, lit it up and I like extended it all the way like psh, and did the little switch thing. And I'm just like, there you go. Yeah, I've done that Bada too. I've, I've cheated. You know? Cheated the courses. And, and, it was, and oh my gosh. And then there was this times that i wasn't doing that i was just like enjoying the world like i was just I, I would just be like sitting there just riding my horse you know finding like random goblins to fight or something and i remember one time i saw the dragon like it was one of the dragons that was uh coming out of the um <clears throat> of like the underworld you know and he's yeah. coming out and i knew exactly where he was so i'm like oh shit so i went and did a quick travel and like jumped and I have it, I have a short clip of it on my switch and like I met like coming down I met the dragon while he was coming up and like I like grabbed a hold of him and got his little scales and shit and then I trot off I'm like see you later man but uh <laughs> dude that game was just so good and I like the fact that you could uh you could do like Jedi shit you know, like someone yeah. like picks up a rock and they throw it and you like stop rewind boom in your face cool that's cool stuff well, it's, it's that, a really I mean, good game i think you. it's very innovative like people <laughs> they i remember they were talking about the reason why they made it like that because they wanted to see what people could do with it because they saw how people were like you know that people modded breath of the wild right someone actually modded yeah. the game to make it two player so they could play yeah. two player breath of the wild online so they saw stuff like that despite the fact they were like oh we're gonna you know we're gonna make sure that that never gets released blah 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 um which i will say this nintendo if you're listening which i doubt anyone nintendo listens to this podcast if you see someone making or modifying something your ip and it looks amazing and everyone wants to play it just hire the person i don't want a salary get them to like make the next innovative new zelda game for you like yeah it's insane what these people can do like i couldn't i don't have the patience to do this shit but that's they saw what that sega did that's yeah. what Sega did, and, and like now you look at look at at Sega. Like a lot of people don't really uh, acknowledge it. I don't think, but Sega really does a lot more with their older IPs than Nintendo does. Like a yeah, lot. They, uh, who was the guy that they hired? They hired the guy who was making Sonic fan games to make like yeah. older versions of the Sonic game. 
which I I'm really impressed by. Um, and that's that's what they should be doing. Valve used to do it. I don't think they do it much anymore, but they used to do that too. Half Life was made by people from the modern community, you know. So, yeah. looking at the Switch, if you were the person designing the Switch to, what would you hope it to be? Um, you know what? I would just want it to be like a little bit more agronomic as a handheld. You know, uh, I I think the Switch like. It's a little too narrow for my hands. It cramps my hands up a little bit. And so you got to get some joy cons with some grips. That's I, I really feel like the the Wii U, the Wii U uh gamepad was much more comfortable than the you know basic switch. And I love I the pro, pro controllers. controller. Yeah, I I barely but, use the the like um controllers on the, the side controllers i always use the pros this yeah. one's like a chinese manufacturer they made their own version of the breath of the wild uh not breath of the wild uh, tears cool. of the kingdom yeah yeah it's a really nice one but here here's here's where i would think it would be kind of cool because it'd be it could be kind of cool if it was like a dual screen yeah and what you could do it'd be like a you know normal screen and you can kind of slide that screen up and it's like boom dual screen ds style so they could like bring back like 3ds and ds and maybe do some more with like uh unique stuff i don't know yeah That'd for cool. me like being in because i you know me i love nintendo i was a nintendo fan since i was very very since i was a wee lad um so looking at the way that they've kind of innovated with the switch i believe that the switch is they're probably we're not going to hear about switch to till the end of 2024 i think maybe the mid 2025 because they know right now the console has a lot more life in it because they've got a new zelda game coming out uh in the style yeah. of the remake they did of um link's awakening link's awakening, link's awakening. Yeah. Yep. in a similar style to that so my daughter was like are you gonna buy that for my birthday dad i'm like yes of course i'll buy it for your <laughs> birthday uh, she's Indeed. so funny man like she'll send me a message going dad you know you love me right i'm like what do you want oh i want this game okay that's no problem i'll buy it for you um <laughs> but for me like i can see that they're, they're trying to get as much life out of this console as they can because they can see that people aren't fed up with it yet like people aren't putting it down yeah. yet sony are already looking to the next thing which is a shame because i don't think the ps5 has gotten uh the miles that it should uh microsoft no, I mean, are I looking just... to kind of get away from consoles altogether they want to try and do streaming units and you know like on live and stuff like that yeah i um i mean i just recently got a ps5 i want to say like a, a year ago yeah a year ago i got a ps5 and i'm just now like i was like man the console was already three years old by the time i jumped on it I and mean, that that kind of tells you how one. <laughs> that, that I mean, that tells you right there how exciting the this generation was. I can go three years before my oh, okay, Final Fantasy sixteen. I got to play that, so I'll go ahead and buy a PS five. What did I mean, you think like, of the remake of seventeen? By the way, did you have you played that yet? Of the oh, oh the um Final Fantasy seven rebirth. Yeah, yeah. You, you said you seventeen. Is it seventeen? Um, yeah, you, was it seven? You, Sorry, seven. Seven. I was like, Final <laughs> yeah, Fantasy yeah, Seventeen. Final, what? Sorry, right. Final Fantasy remake? Seven. Yeah, so Final Fantasy yeah. Seven Rebirth. I man, I couldn't vibe with Rebirth. I couldn't like. I needed. I needed to try to play it a little bit more, but I just. I don't know, like something about it. I I feel like I'm on like, a linear path, and it's mm. like I'm on a conveyor belt of like, okay. Here I go, here I go, cut scene. Oh, got to do the side quest. All right, do the side quest. Okay, let's go back over here now. Come over here. It just feels so structured. Mm. And um, it's a, I game. would say the experience is it's kind of very different to the original Final Fantasy VII. Oh, like yeah. It's, yeah. It's deviated so much. And and, he, and here's, here's the thing, like, because, you know, I was thinking about this the other day was like, I mean, I'm just lucky enough to be like, oh man, I've I've been I've been able to experience Final Fantasy VII remake and rebirth. 
because that's something we've always wanted. And, you know, it's its own thing. And I, I don't really care for Rebirth. I will check out the next one. I'll try to finish Rebirth and check out the next one because I'm a big fan of the series. But if it yeah, because it's a quadrilogy, isn't it? Like there's gonna yeah. be a third one. Mm. But if it sucks, <clears throat> if it's not, if it's not fun, I can still go back and play the OG Final Fantasy VII. Like who cares? And you can play it you on know? the Switch. Exactly. So, yeah. You know, I'm like, ah, uh, you know, at, at the end of the day, I, I have, I have my memories from Final Fantasy VII, and that, that's, that's whatever. You know. Well, it was, it was actually quite funny because I remember when I played it on the PlayStation, it came boxed with a demo disc for... No, it. I think it was the demo disc or the demo disc that came with it was Xenoblade, uh, Xenogears. Yeah. I don't know if you ever played that. Xenogears mm-hmm. was actually the game I wanted, but I ended up playing Final Fantasy VII just to get the demo for that. And this was the time when they would give you like extra little cool stuff with the PlayStation discs, right? You would have a two-disc yeah. box. The, the one disc would be the game. Like, I think Final Fantasy VII was like three discs, plus you yeah. got a fourth disc that had a demo for Xenoblade, uh, Xenogears. Um, if you guys don't know what Xenogears is, look it up. It's a really good game. Oh, yeah. Um, and it, it's kind of the forefather to Xenoblade, believe it or not. Um, mm. So with Xenogears, that was the game I wanted to play because I loved the story, right? It was the fact that the this this guy was the protagonist, but it, he may have been the villain at the same mm-hmm. time. Um, but then I played Final Fantasy VII, and that was amazing in its own right. And I think the story, that story is excellent. Plus, if you've seen the spin-off stuff that came out for like the PlayStation 2, uh, the movie that came out, which was freaking excellent as well, its own right. Yeah, avid children. Woo. Yeah, Freaking, I think that was the that, best movie they ever made. That movie has like aged so well too, because you watch yeah. it, and I mean, like that, you know, it's, that's a pretty old movie now. But you watch it, and you're like, man, it still looks fucking good. It People can good. shit on the spirits within, but they've, I've never heard anyone say anything bad about Advent Children. No, like it's, it's, it's a fantastic, stuff. fantastic movie. Especially, um, I will say, I, I will say though, if you're gonna watch Avid Children, just watch the extended version. Extended version yeah. is like, it, it fills in a lot of plot holes in the original. So yeah. Also, you've got like Dissidia as well on the PSP, which told uh-huh. the story. It was like the prequel, but I think they've added that into the Rebirth game like i know they've released a version of the city for the switch which is like yeah. a reboot a remake of that so that tells the story before final fantasy rebirth mm-hmm. um so you know with that it's for me i'm as a fan i haven't played it yet because i don't have a playstation 5 but as an avid fan like you i'm i'm pretty much similar like I've always, when someone complains about a game to me, like I remember when people complaining about the Saints Row remake, I went, you've got the original Saints Row. Just go and play that. Like you don't have to play this game. If you don't like that, if you played it, you don't like it, trade it in. (laughs) Yeah. It doesn't matter to me. I mean, because at the end of the day, we we have more, more stuff that we can consume more than ever. You know, like that, I have like the, uh, the PlayStation plus like premium thing you know on my playstation 5 so there's so many games like i don't really have that many playstation 5 games physically because well i have a service that's like my own personal blockbuster i just go in there i'm like all right i'm going to check this game out you know i may i may really enjoy it and if it's a game that i really like then i'll go on amazon i'm like okay is there a physical how much is it oh it's only this much okay i want to get a physical because i really want this in my collection but if if it wasn't, there's no harm, no foul. I'm paying for a service either way, you know? Like, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And it, yeah, if you like it, you can buy it physically. I, it's one of the things where I would advocate for online services when it comes to gaming. But I still believe that we should not transition to full online. I feel oh, yeah. like physical I should agree. be there. Yeah. I agree. That's why That's why I'm like, if, I, if it's something I really like, I still try to buy a physical for it. Yeah. You know, I'm like, all right, I can well, get what do you think about the whole online gaming idea? Like the the whole thing about uh, game companies looking to transition away from physical media to online only? Uh, it's dangerous. 
<laughs> you know, like that's, uh, that's, that's what I feel like. I just feel like it's dangerous. Cause I feel like, um, yeah, you just have less control. You, your, your service can be shut down anytime. You know, what happens if there's a cyber security attack, boom, you can't watch your season of daredevil. <laughs> I don't know. Like it's, it's, it's interesting. I just, I'm not a big fan of it. You know, especially like, uh, cause you know, Xbox 360, the online just shut down on that. And, yeah. um, it sucks cause you know, thankfully there are folks that, you know, are in the modding community and have gotten the ISOs to some of these games that otherwise would have been completely gone in obscurity now, like the Xbox 360 version of Scott Pilgrim, boom, would have been gone forever. You know, uh, Marvel versus Capcom 2, the, the Xbox 360 or PS3 version would have been gone forever. But with yeah, I have a physical people, version of Scott Pilgrim as well. It's on my shelf. I yeah, I got yeah. one. I had to. I think, is mine the limited run one, I think? Let me check. Let me mine check. is, yeah. I think mine is the limited run one as well. Um, I don't know how it ended up in China. Yeah, it's the limited run one. I wonder if it's the same. Oh, yeah, you get the same cover I have. Yeah, yep. it got. I, I don't know how it got imported here, but I I found it on. Is Taobao. it uh, is it reversible? Because the yeah. one that, yeah, yeah, that, that's yeah, that's the same. That's the same one I have. It came with a book as well, I think. Yeah, uh, but I've got that. The cart is amazing. I also have it on digital download because I bought it on digital, and I was like, you know what, I want it physically because I was one of the first people to buy that on the Xbox 360. And I used oh, to play yeah. it with my kids all the time. Like we would play it all the time. We completed the game together. Like um, uh, that and Castle Crashes. I still don't own Castle Crashes physically. I'm going to see if I can get a physical version of that game. Yeah, um, Castle Crashers. Oh my god, So good. It was one of my favorite experiences on the Xbox 360. Uh, it's still going as well. They're doing DLC for it now. That's crazy. Yeah, I uh, I I remember playing um, like on the Xbox 360. I remember playing Limbo. I really enjoyed Limbo a lot when it came to like the indie games. That's when like indie games really started blossoming, though. Was the Xbox 360 era that that generation? Remember how big like wish... Super Meat Boy? Remember how big? Yeah, that was? that's. But that was also due to YouTube, man. Like so many yeah. YouTube people were playing that game. Um, and it made like a lot of people were literally playing Super Meat Boy. The developers um, got, and it's one of those things as well. Like uh, the other thing that made it a success was remember Indie Game, the movie. Yeah, yeah, I remember. It's so, been a long time since know, I've watched that, but yep, I remember. I remember watching it. Yeah, it's. Um, I think it was on Netflix when I watched it. And the guy behind Fez, I, th I think he's now a, like a DJ. The guy who created Fez and was supposed to create oh, Fez 2. Yeah, he got, I remember he, he got, got cyberbullied off the internet. <laughs> yeah, like I, you know, I can't remember. Man, what did he really? I can't remember everything that he did. Was it was it really that bad? Looking at it, looking at it in hindsight, like was it? He said, I think he said something really controversial and stupid, and then everyone started attacking him. And instead of like shutting up and just letting it go, oh yeah, that was it. He said that making games was hard, um, and that you know, he people don't understand the grind and the uh, the amount that it goes into making these games, which is true because he made it by himself. Yeah, but people just but, shat on him. Well, he did. He did the first. He did like what's the, the first no no for any creative person. And any any creative person is listening right here. I'm going to give you some advice, like never like belittle your audience on your yeah, product. I never like, understand never, why people do this. Like like, are is making games hard? Absolutely. You know, I don't yeah. know how to make games. You know, but when when he like belittles and he's like, listen, it's hard, and you don't understand. It's just mm, it kind of just rubs off the wrong way, but uh. Yeah, that that's yeah. It sounds like the, the big uh, big miscommunication. I, I, don't know. I remember he was going on about it because he made like this. I think 
the the most successful indie game developer now is probably still Scott Colfin, the guy who made Five Nights at Freddy's. But I remember he was going on about it and he just would not. And I, and I think, and it bring us back to kind of the whole arguments on the internet thing. There is a, a thing that people expect once they become successful. I think they expect to like even notch, like if you know, notch the guy who made Minecraft, they expect their audience to accept anything they say. And when you have someone saying, oh, making games is hard, he's practically a millionaire because he has no staff. He doesn't have a company. Well, technically, he had, he did have a company, but he had this one IP, right? The IP was really successful. He was making a lot of money from it. And to then go to everybody, well, my life is so hard to people who could barely, and it's even worse now, but you had people who could barely make ends meet, people like yourself who are working two jobs. And yeah. this guy gets to sit on his ass at home, make a video game, put that video game out, make a shit ton of money, and then all he had to do is just sit in his man cave and make a second one. Well, it's, it's kind of like uh, with some of the controversy you've been hearing about with some live streamers that uh, they're like the reactionary channels or whatever. I remember some guy was under hot water because he was, you know, complaining about like saying how like live streaming is like harder than working, you know, a, a 10 oh, yeah, hour Hassan, day. Or... Hassan uh, Pika. Hassan Pika. Yeah. I know yeah. And is. I heard that and I'm yeah. just like, I'm like, come on, dude. Like, don't get me wrong. Okay. <laughs> It is hard to live stream, especially I can only do it for a couple of hours. I can't, I can not understand or imagine these folks that do like nine and 10 hour streams. I mean, that there is some commitment to it. So I give them credit where credit's due, but it's not mm. the same as going out there with a fucking jackhammer or, or digging ditches. But at the same time, like, does it have to be a competition? You know, like, I can understand what he was saying. I think the way yeah, he said it was wrong. Yeah, exactly. I think the way he said it was wrong because he just sounded like a man baby, right? He sounded because very condescending. A, yeah. Yeah. He's a millionaire. He's living in a very huge mansion of a place in LA, right? Yeah. But I get what he meant, which is you've got to always be on, right? You're mm -hmm. constantly on. You're constantly entertaining people because well, I've I've heard the same thing from actors who would say, you know, being an actor is hard. It is because there's a social kind of platform that you have to have. There's also like um, this idea that you're like Hassan Pike is supposed to be a political influencer who discusses politics. So when he's misinformed about something, he, people are going to take him to task. He gets cyber bullied on a regular basis. He then has to be like this monkey on show and doing live streams all the time. But here's the caveat. He, if he didn't want to do it tomorrow, he could just stop doing it. He has enough money. He doesn't need to, you know, worry about where his next paycheck's coming from. And as someone in my situation, I could tell you I was working as an actor for 20 years and I was barely making rent. Yeah, I was living with my mum. I was eating pot noodle on a daily basis, right? Um, not you know, I was watching my pennies, counting my calories, making sure that I had enough to to feed myself, and being in that position. And I was at homeless for ten years at one point. So looking at that and looking at some spoiled rich guy, because that's what oh, he was yeah. coming off as. Exactly, telling me, "Oh, my life is so hard." It's like, bro, cry in your millions right yeah and it's the same with actors when actors are like well you know um, my life a life of an actor is hard it's like dude you are part of the one percent you yeah. you know you don't have to worry about you can quit any day you want you can leave any day you want and i think that's the disconnect that a lot of these guys have with everyone else and i agree with you you don't use your audience understands you they like you but don't tell people, oh, my life is so hard being rich. And it, that's because that's what they hear. They're like, yeah. oh, poor little rich boy. Like, uh, oh, I listened to a book on Audible, on Audible recently. By the way, guys, if you have no time to read, Audible is your best friend. 
Like you can just get as many books as you can and just oh yeah, listen I freaking love it. That's such a good thing, man. Like I I've, I've listened to over like forty books over the last year, <laughs> and I, I love it. I I really love it when it's like um like an autobiography and it's like yeah, the person is like reading it. Yeah, you know, like I I've listened to the like the Rob Halford from Judas Priest his uh, biography. And he played chapter one, you know, Birmingham, England. And I'm just like, oh, this is so cool. But um, yeah, I really, I really love that. Um, but I'm currently listening to Dave Grohl's autobiography at the moment myself. Oh so, wow, yeah. I have to check that out because I, 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 I mean, I knew a lot about Dave Grohl, like Nirvana wise, you know, because I followed Nirvana. I, I did, I read a lot of Nirvana stuff, but he wasn't until later in Nirvana, so. Yeah, he's talking about like right now he was talking about being a shit drummer uh, and how um, he used to practice but didn't practice good enough like to be yeah. a drummer uh, and his first time on stage. he's it, It's hilarious going through it because you can hear the anxiety in his voice when he talks about it as well. Um, that's good. That's why it's another reason why I love these things. And I'm but I also think you're right. There's a lot of humility that needs to be there with the celebrity and there are those who are very humble that like people that try not to be too edgy that won't um go off and say to people oh blah 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 this is what i think and i think there are those who no matter what they do they're always going to get drama from people which is the sad thing about it um but i agree with you i think your audience is there if you want to utilize your audience you want to utilize them in a way so that they keep coming back and the moment you say something so controversial and so stupid because you're not acknowledging someone else's you know issues mm -hmm. because like currently the world is in a credit crunch um and the cost of living everywhere is extremely expensive so you know it, it makes life a lot more harder for everybody involved and it gives all of us uh, a situation where all it takes is one person to go hang on a second what the fuck yeah, yeah and it it gets into that whole you know problem and i think oh that was his name phil fish that was ah, phil fish. that was his name ah yeah phil fish phil fish good old phil fish. um good old dj phil fish as he's called now but when he was talking about that people were just like fuck you <laughs> the whole the whole of I, the, I just man but you look back and like, man, that was the that was the controversy back then. Like that was like, dude, that was a big deal back then. And it's so funny looking at that, being like, oh my god. And you look at like the oh my god stuff that's happening now, and you're like, oh man, it wasn't so bad back then. It's like holy shit. Well, you guys could have a tyrant in office <laughs> come the come the next election. So, I mean, holy <laughs> shit, dude. I honestly, I feel like sometimes, like when I'm when I'm watching the stuff that's that's going politically in the climate, I feel like I'm watching a Netflix show. Yeah, it, it's. I, I it's, always say to people, idiocracy was supposed to be a comedy, not a documentary. Because I mean, there's, <laughs> I mean, honestly, I mean, just just looking at it at face value, like yeah. that 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 one debate was like. Oh my god, that was like something you would see on HBO or something. I'm I'm really glad that at least Biden came out of that debate going, I need to step down. We need someone new. Because yeah. he he did not look good. Neither of them looked good. But you know, you'll hear the the pro Trump guys going, Yeah, he was amazing. And it's like, no, he wasn't. <laughs> Neither of them looked good. It looked like two old men who were out of touch trying to have a conversation about something and taking shots at one another and it was just like it i felt like it to me i felt like there was on both on on both ends i i feel like they i feel like they did not address anything for us as people i felt like that was their two egos fighting each other that night yeah it was, know, it was it total, was total total disillusion like they ignored everybody it was just two old men taking shots yeah and it was it, i i watched it and i was like this is a shit show i'm like this is, this is, is not, like, i'm like watching this and i'm like this is, this should be an argument at the moose lodge yeah. not 
like in front of you know not our potential presidents i was like oh man this is scary this is freaking scary i can't believe this is really happening these you guys know? one of these guys is going to have the codes to nuclear <sighs> missiles you know at least you know one old guy's probably going to forget them the other old guy's probably going to press the button when someone says something bad about him you know <laughs> just it's, the, it's, it's so fun. depressing it's so depressing i'm like oh my god because i mean like because i i i feel like I've, i'm in that i'm in that little percentage in in my country of like folks mm. that just at this point we just want to exist you know yeah. um and... I, it's the whole reason i moved out from the, the uk man like brexit when that happened i was like yep i'm out <laughs> i'm yeah. done I can't I can't be in this shit show and everyone's like, Will you leave then? I'm like, I'm gonna <laughs> Oh man. But yeah, we I mean we just yeah, we just want to exist and work and pay our bills and have a little bit of money left over and have a vacation and if we get sick we can feel better again like i think it's just very yeah. simple fundamental things but i feel like like go to a hospital and actually be able to pay without getting bankrupt you know because you, yeah. you've got like a fucking you need surgery and you're not going to be paying like 2.5 million for that fucking surgery um yeah. because someone is estimating this cost when you know it doesn't cost that much like as i said like we were talking offline about the fact i had had back surgery um i went private and the back surgery that i had was fifty thousand uh rmb which was about five grand right still mm -hmm. ma more manageable than the us i went to a oh, public yeah. hospital when i was diagnosed with diabetes with the tests with the drugs with everything they gave me to stabilize me for 10 days i had my own room that was like 500 quid wow I mean, it's not bad. No, no, I hadn't like at the time I was because I I finished my contract at the other place that I was in in Hangzhou and I was moving to a new job in Pinghu, so I had a month lapse of my insurance, so I didn't have insurance, so I had to pay for it. But it, you know, it was enough where I could sit there and go, well, I'm I'm not going to get bankrupted by this. I can pay five hundred bucks, you know. Yeah. Um. It's quite a fun, like <clears throat> when I had the insurance pay for my back surgery, I'm sitting up in the bed and like six nurses come into my be my bedroom and I'm sitting there thinking, oh shit, what's going on? Because I was kind of, <laughs> kind of scare roused, you know, I was like aroused, but scared at the same time. Because you had like these six pretty nurses sit next to me go, so how are you paying? And I'm like, I have insurance. And they were just like, oh, okay then. And then they all get up and then they all leave. Yeah. But you saw like, as they were coming in, one of them was like locking the door to make sure that I didn't run. And I'm like, I've just had back surgery. I'm not going to run. Oh, kind of. They're like, one of them's like <laughs> locking it. The other one's like behind the little uh, IV thing with the big sticks yeah. that hit you in the back of the head. It's like, holy shit, man. These are like nurse ninja assassins we're, we're for, gonna like, do like... for health department dashing. Boom. There's an anime right there, dude. We're, we're like going to do a little combat, nerd. like credit card declines. And they pull out your spine. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, so how are you paying today? Yeah. It's like try to was... jump out the window and like so oh gosh they jump out the window yeah. and they jump out the window they're falling down and it fighting was... each other it was so fucking funny like i was literally because they they paid a woman to come in and clean me because i couldn't clean myself i was just literally laying in bed i couldn't move right yeah because i had to lay in bed for the, like five days so she was coming in like cleaning my bits um and then i had to start walking around and stuff and when it got to the final day, I literally just like six nurses locks the door, sits next to me. And I'm like, well, two things start this way. One, a horror movie. Or two, a porno. Let's see which one this is going to be. <laughs> it just turned into a comedy. <laughs> but it, it literally was. They just asked me and they're like, okay, then. And then you just see them leave after they they confirmed that i had insurance and shut the door and i'm just sitting there like what the hell just happened 
you know i have i have moments sometimes that that i, I have moments at work that i feel like i'm like holy shit this would be great for like something on television I, i'll tell i'll tell you something that happened um and this customer come up to the uh, counter the seafood counter and she was getting some salmon and you know she's a regular i've seen her before she kind of looked at my name tag and she goes uh she's like yeah my my friend that uh recently passed away she used to shop here she had a big crush on you i'm like excuse me and she says it again i mean she said it so nonchalant and i'm just like what do I say about this? Okay, first what off, you, I'm like, like hmm, where's your friend located? Let me go and dig her up. <laughs> but, but but no. So 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 I'm just like, okay. I'm like, so my first my first thing I said was like, well, my condolences. You know, um, I hate no I hate to hear about your best friend, but to get it less awkward, I was like, well, <laughs> it sounds like your best friend had good taste. <laughs> And I was just like, oh my, she started laughing. I was just like, but well, that that's good. That's the reaction that you want. <laughs> I was just like, I I don't I don't know uh where where did where that came from. It was it was so random. It was so random. I've had a lot of weird retail things happen in my life, and that was definitely Trust one me, of them. I've, I used to Ooh. work in retail, so I can tell you uh similar stories. But the, the one thing I had recently, I was over in the UK last year in August. I was spending time with my daughter. We're on the bus. And when I got to the UK, I had a bit of a reverse culture shock. So mm -hmm. I went from like, like right now I'm sitting here in my Jean-Claude Van Damme vest, um, looking extra muscular, you know, doing the dance. Yeah. Um, and I get to the UK from <clears throat> like hot freaking China. <clears throat> And for some reason, the UK is fucking cold. So I had to go to the local Primark, pick out some clothes. So I got like this long sleeve tee and a Dragon Ball Z t-shirt. Yeah. And I'm on the bus with my daughter. And this woman, random woman, don't know who the fuck she is, quite cute, comes up to me and goes, nice t-shirt. I'm like, great. She goes, so you watch Dragon Ball Z? I'm like, yeah. And she went and just looked at me. Oh. And I think she was waiting for me to like ask her out or ask her for a number. And my daughter's just looking at me and then the girl's looking at me and there's this awkward pause for like two minutes. And I said, um, see you later. And she was like, yeah. And then she hey, just went. Burhan, Burhan, what you should have done, man. Okay. What you should have done when she said a nice t-shirt, you could have been like, yeah. And she was just like, you like Dragon Ball Z? And you're like, yeah. And then then you're like, name three Dragon Ball Z characters. <laughs> yeah, you freaking pose up. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, who's your? Oh, who's this guy? Who? Who's this guy? Huh? Who's that? Is Goku? Trick question. That's, that's Kakarot. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's literally you just look at it and go pose up. You don't watch Dragon Ball Z. I bet you don't even watch One Piece. You pose up. Fuck off. You don't know this. Name me an episode. Who's Vegeta's wife? Do you know Vegeta's wife? No? Then oh, fuck gosh. off. <laughs> you know, and, and I always feel bad too because there's times that I, I do, like, I'll see, like, some chick. I, I remember one time I was at work and I saw this chick walking and she had this, uh, she had a Splatterhouse shirt on. Fucking Splatterhouse. Like, that's PC Engine TurboGrafx 16. And Xbox. Yeah. But she was wearing like the old school one, like the old school oh, art. Yeah. And I'm like, oh man, and I'm like, that's awesome. And I remember like, she was kind of like, like, I don't know if she thought that I was going to try to be like that, being like, oh, what's your favorite TurboGrafx 16 game? But instead, I was just like, oh my God, Splatterhouse. She's like, oh, okay, cool. I'm like, no, you don't understand. Splatterhouse freaking rocks. And uh, you don't really see a whole lot of people with TurboGrafx 16 stuff. You know, so that was pretty cool. In China, I think it's a it's a regular thing. You see people wear it. It's quite funny. You know the joke of people wearing like getting tattoos and it's of a Chinese symbol, and it turns out the symbol that they're getting means like fucking foreigner or something like that, you know, or yeah, yeah, fucking yeah. baldy. <clears throat> In China, it's pretty similar. They'll they'll get t-shirts that have English on it, but the English is terrible, or there's like a word. Or a syllable. Oh that's yeah! And I remember there was like a little kid 
who had an NWA t-shirt. He was like five and I was working at a kindergarten and he was, and it was literally NWA N words with attitude. And it had like easy Dre. And I'm just sitting there looking at this kid going, Oh dear. <laughs> and then my colleague just looked at me and went, what? It's a t-shirt. And I'm like, yeah, but that, that word. And she was just like, what? Because the, there's a there's a variation of that word in China. Uh, that means yeah. that, right? Yeah. So the way they say it, but it doesn't mean what people think it means in English because yeah. it's in pinyin. Um, and what people don't understand was Mandarin was well before we had people trying to enslave each other and using certain words to derogatory. So she didn't get it. And so I had to explain it to her in detail. And then she started laughing. <laughs> right. Um, there was another student. I took a photo with him and his teacher, his, his t-shirt said, um, I start my day with coffee and cuss words. Hey, I, I and then, can't argue that. I can, the kid's ahead of the game. Go ahead and get it out of the way, kid. T-shirts to like three to four year olds. <laughs> And I'm just sitting there looking at that going, I'm so glad the parents don't understand English because it's it's really bad. <laughs> but they, yeah, they have seen, it all I've, the time. Yeah, I've seen some of the like, shirts like that back in the day. But One final question. Um, so in terms of um, how you do your online presence now, how do you manage everything? Do you just make um, things because you you want to you know oh I've got an idea for a video let's do that today, or do you have mm -hmm. a regular schedule? Uh, I try to have a regular schedule. I have like a I try to have like my own like um, mission. I'm like man, I really want to do at least two or three videos this month, so I really try to work hard on that. I'm like oh I really want to do more live streaming this month, so I really try to work hard on that. Um, because yeah, I used to do like two videos a week and then sometimes I would do like a video and a podcast a week. Um, yeah. and it just like, yeah, after a while it just burned me out and I just don't, I don't have the same kind of time that I have, you know, as I did back then, I had more time yeah. to do a lot of this stuff. Like there, there's a lot of stuff that a lot of stuff I did in the past that, you know, kind of want to be done again like i know um uh the singer from slammerai eli i remember he messaged and he was like man it'd be kind of cool if we had a slammerai re uh, reunion and i'm just like oh, i just don't have the time i don't have the time like i did back then and then like excess gaming podcast like me and james uh we don't really do podcasting and it's not because there's anything with us it's just I don't really have the time that I used to have, you know, like our schedules don't really coincide and, you know, it, it is what it is. So like we try to every once in a while, I know, I know we'll probably try to work on something at least for Halloween, you know, if anything, just come back on Halloween and have like another live show. That'd probably be a lot of fun, but uh, yeah. Yeah. I just, I just try to try to keep my channel active while staying creative and not burning out that's that's the biggest uh juggle so one last thing um <clears throat> tell us where we can find you like if uh, i'm a new viewer I've, i've never known who xander scullion is where can i find you you can find me in a dark alley <laughs> <laughs> with a big brown trench coat yeah drinking a big <laughs> drinking a big glass of milk but no um <laughs> You can find me on YouTube, uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, X, Twitter, whatever, the, whatever Elon's calling it. Um, I just call TikTok. it Twitter. Yeah, I don't like I don't like calling it X. I no. because I'm Xander, so like I just I don't know. I just like check out Xander Scully on on the X, you know. But uh, I always in I always associate with like X hamster and like you know yeah. <laughs> But yeah, like, so, so yeah, you can find me on all those. And um, yeah, like I try to do like a little live stream every once in a while. It's just like uh, playing like retro games or uh, whatever's out and about. And um, yeah, that's, that's it. And you can also listen to my music too. I have music on Spotify and uh, Apple music. And this is Sanders Scullion. I have like 
a couple songs on there, but I'm going to be working on some more stuff. And uh, like I said earlier, like I said in the podcast, I'm going to be working on trying to get like some live streaming music going, especially since I don't know when I'm going to be playing a lot of live shows. So this is like mm-hmm. the second best thing. I mean, if I can't go out and play live for everyone, at least I could play live for you guys, you know, that haven't seen me and I can, you know, I don't have a bad setup, you know, I can always do some lighting and, you know, get things going, have you know, request, I would have like my own like set list and I want it to be very diverse. I want to like showcase the different kinds of songs and different genres. I enjoy playing as a bass player. Like it's not just going to be like, Oh, it's all going to be punk, but maybe it will. Maybe I'll play a whole like Ramones album from first song to the very last, like one set boom. Or I might just do like just a bunch of different songs or have like requests, you know, People can like donate, but boom, I want to hear this. I can try to play it, but um, it's a similar thing Megaran does on Twitch too. He does DJ yeah. sessions where he will sit there and play like a bunch of his songs and other songs and stuff on, on Twitch. It, it's, I think that's so cool. I think that's really, really cool because I love playing like live. I love, I love the live reaction. Like um, I'm, I'm a nervous wreck when I'm playing live because I'm so scared that something's going to fuck up. But mm-hmm. at the end of the day, I really, really love, you know, being able to play and see people's reactions. So being able to do that online in a way of like maybe just reading text. I mean, yeah, they're not there, but uh, I'm still reaching to somebody and still influencing, you know, because you never know. So someone can see you play something musically and that can inspire them to go their own musical path. And that's really, that's really cool. A way to do it. Okay. Yeah. Zana, thank you very much, of course. And guys and girls, you can also find Zana on TikTok. He does have a TikTok channel. Is it the similar? Is it Zana Scullion on there too? Yeah. Yeah. I'll make sure I put the, the links in the comments for you guys. Thank you very much for Zana for this. It's been it's quite fun reconnecting and talking and discussing about like old times on YouTube and other bits and pieces. Um, and just for everybody else out there, as you know, this has been Zander Scullion. I'm Michael Burhan, letting you know that we've got gameplay. Have you? <laughs>